Welcome back to the channel for another Creality 3D printer thing. Just join us now, there's a playlist for this thing which I'll put right there for you, as well as down in the description, so you can go get all caught up with the happenings with it if you'd like. What we are here to do today is to take our stock hot end off, which I'll give you one guess why it's called the hot end, and replace it with this hot end kit, which is from Micro Swiss, as it says. And what this one is, is a direct duplication of the Creality hot end, but with different nozzle threads, and this is all metal. So when I say all metal, in the Creality one, there's like a plastic bit down inside here, and this collar, of course, is plastic. That's just what holds our tube in. And if you want to print high temperature materials, you'll end up melting that little plastic bit in there. And we don't want to do that, so we're going to change over to this guy. The nozzle thread, and this is a nozzle, that's the threaded part of it being different is actually a good thing. For whatever reason, on Creality CR10 Maxes and CR20s, they use a weird ass hot end with a weird thread in it, and you have to get special weird nozzles that are both hard to find and cost a fortune if you want to continue to use this hot end. So for those two reasons, we're moving on. This Micro Swiss hot end is about 70 bucks. I've bought a few nozzles for the factory Creality hot end, and they're like 15, dollars each something like that it's just stupid there's no sense in it so we're not going to keep doing that so without further ado we're just going to get this thing swapped out also now is as good of time as any to mention that i struggle badly with trying to figure out how to film this printer because everything's so big and it's so awkwardly placed on my desk and all that stuff so if this ends up being really shaky and you can't see anything i apologize in advance just gonna do the best i can what i'm doing here is this just like a heat shield there are three screws we'll get them out of there and that's right one of them's kind of buried got to remove this little clip that just i think maybe didn't fall on the floor push that guy down pull this guy out I'm trying to get my tube out of it not succeeding looks like for our purposes i don't need to worry about it anyway i can get in there crooked am going to get a hardware pan started looks like it was just those two screws i thought there were three see some dust and stuff built up in there just from actually having run it i think it will be easier for me to just take the hot end off and then fight with that bowden tube these are all m2s so far not a big deal so far our little insulator booty off just to show you the heat block and the nozzle see if i have any better luck getting the tube off now and i did already remove all the filament from this should be able to push that down and get it out of there see if i can Kind of cheat with a pair of pliers, put a little more force on it. Not really. Oh, well, there's another way to go here too, which is just remove the fitting. Before I do that, I think I'm going to take the heater out of the heater block. This thing is the heater block, and the heater is in it. It looks like there's a Phillips screw that holds it in. Because we have a replacement block, but we still use the factory heater. So we can get the Phillips screw out. Wow, that was like not even tight at all. Actually, I think that's our thermocouple temperature sense wire. The heater, I think, is held in with an Allen screw right there, a really tiny guy that also wasn't tight at all. The heater, okay, the heater's loose. So now do I just, just kind of trying to gently pop that thermocouple wire off there. And it is not wanting to come gently. There it goes. Got her slid out. Okay, now then, let's see if we can get our guy out of here. Feels like not really. It's wanting to twist not sure how far down that tube actually goes in this thing quite a bit all right got her off now let's see if we can get this thing to cooperate with us this has got some sort of silicon grease on it or something which makes it really interesting to try and grip to push this thing off if i can make this just sort of a wedge on it i am very tempted to cut it off but i don't want to lose that much tube if i don't have to actually just in height difference i think we're going to end up not needing as much tube if that makes any sense so our new guy's going to be quite a bit lower, so not as much tube will need to go in it, I guess. I'm not sure this collar even is moving. Of, of course, also, I thought this would be like a four minute long video and not going that way. Okay, the collar's moving. I've got it compressed. It just will not come out of there. For better or worse, I'm going to cut that off. I do know I want to be careful cutting it. And try and leave it with a good end or a nice end. So this is an X-Acto with like a brand new blade. Released. Now I can fidget with that and try and get the fitting back if I want. And our new guy here comes with this piece, which looks like it's an adapter to go from the heat sink to the heat block, and also a Phillips head screw to assemble them. That is what I'm gonna do. Our heat block should just thread onto that, I think. That screw really looks wrong. 
Okay, so I need to loosen the screw and change the orientation of that. So we want our heater block like so, so the heater can actually go in it. And it has a hole for another screw and the thermocouple wire right there. It comes with the world's tiniest set screw to put in there. I'm not even sure this Allen wrench will fit it. It does. I believe that's going to go there. Except after looking at it, that set screw wasn't going to work out for us because there wasn't anything to actually hold the thermocouple in with. So the factory Creality screw is the same thread. So that will work for us. Get our heater and the probe back in there. Here's the Creality screw it came with. That's just snugged up. I didn't get it super tight. They didn't have it super tight. These heater screws are 1.5 millimeter. And these I am going to cinch down on a little bit so we want to have good heat transfer got it pushed too far in i don't think i want the other side of it poking out there we go it's a little more flush it came with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle which is what i want to use so i'm going to put it in there now and these don't need to be super duper tight a little more than snug there we go came with a new silicon booty must go on like so now i think the move is just to put the screws back in it and off we go. Oh, I've got the heater in it upside down. That should be pointing up. Oops, not a big deal. Actually don't know if it'd be okay to just bend those wires the other way, but I'm not going to. Thermocouple wires kind of mad at me now too. So I'm gonna kind of go six of one, half dozen of the other here and change sides on the thermocouple wire if I can and bend it over. Just feels like that's probably less catastrophic. No, it totally was not less catastrophic. So I am just going to bend that over. This is all going very poorly. The good thing about fidgeting with this about 500 times is I put the wrong screw in it the first time. I forgot it was this big Phillips head guy. Now I'm just going to bend that back over. Our tube is still too short. Imagine that. For right now, I'm just going to pull the tube out of there and make it fit. And I will just replace the tube because of course I'm doing this because I need it to print. So yeah, we'll shove that guy in there in a minute. Put our booty back on and get it bolted back down. It's like it's gonna be one of those days. Turn the camera on, turn the brain off. Cause the wires definitely wanna come out of the other side. I don't think I'll hurt anything leaving the heater block going the other way. So backward, we'll find out. Yeah, it totally doesn't fit that way. So that won't work. So do all this over again. So where I went wrong is I had this heater block assembled wrong to begin with. The screws to actually get the heater out, the heads for them are supposed to face down, which seems goofy to me. So I had to unscrew this guy off, flip it over, blah, blah, blah. All this would have probably fit just fine if I would have never done it wrong to begin with. Of course, this thing came with zero instructions. Fun for me. And, you know, I didn't watch anybody else's video because I would screw my video up. Anyhow, let's see if I can get it put back together now. Okay back where we started got it all flipped around i guess the boot goes on the other way now we can put screws in it and hang the thing back up except these screws are way too long okay then i did find it two other screws in the box but these are like counterboard heads and they were one was in a ziploc bag the other one wasn't just all seems weird to me but we'll try one yeah i can see the the heat sink's got a counterbore in it so these are the right screws plus it got tight Let's see if i can horn schwoggle enough of that to get it there. There we go. Locked in. Came with new locks, which is nice. I don't have to find the one that just launched across the room. Immediately jam it so I can't reach it. There we go. Get our fan screwed back on and give it a test drive. Okay, I'm gonna send it through a leveling routine and make sure the tip doesn't like crash the bed or anything because the next thing I need to do is put a glass bed on for what I want to do. We don't want to shatter a $100 glass bed. I will return momentarily. So I got my glass bed on. You guys probably have a hard time seeing, but sheet of glass and that is polycarbonate. I printed that at 270C, which is probably approaching 600F. I'll throw a note to say for sure. Pretty dang hot. It's about as hot as I can get this printer. Something else I ran into is that thermocouple or thermistor up in the heater block that I bumbled with a ton. I think I've damaged mine because if I get the screw on it just any more than touching the wire at all, it will short it out. Display down here will read 357C and the printer will error out because obviously it, it knows that's not right. I have ordered a new thermistor or a pack of a few just to have them more Bowden tube just to have it. 
This didn't adhere to the bed very well at all, which I knew was coming. The whole reason I'm using a glass bed here is because I'm gonna have to take a glue stick and glue stick this up to give it a texture to bite onto so it will actually print and stick. This stuff is remarkably strong. I'm squeezing at that about as hard as I can. And there's only two rounds of 0.4 millimeter extrusion on that there. So this stuff is super strong and it's super high temperature resistance. And what I need is the temp resistance for what I'm working on here. I would say our installation of our Micro Swiss hot end is complete. You can see it chilling out right down in there. Foibles and everything aside, welcome to the channel. It's kind of just how it goes when I do stuff. I just don't pay enough attention, especially with a camera in my hand. I just lose my mind and things go meh, but they could go meh for you too. So now you know some more things that uh, even the Micro Swiss instructions don't tell you. Uh, what I saw, they just kind of assume that you are watching their video and doing it just literally exactly what they're doing and putting it together exactly backward like I did the first time isn't even something they appeared to cover. But anyhow, it's on there, it's running. I'm going to get this guy glue sticked up and get some stuff printing. I want to thank you guys for stopping by for this video. And we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max E. Saddington Bear, and if you like that video, hey, like the video. If you'd like to watch some more of them, here's some more for you. And if you want to come back and watch more, always consider becoming a subscriber. And we'd like to thank you once again from the bottom of both our hearts for stopping in.